All right, so I thought about what you were saying, and it doesn't really make sense that a drive assembly would get damaged in shipping that badly. It looks perfectly intact. These things are pretty robust, so I thought, okay, let's look further. It's probably a board issue. So rather than just trying to directly try to make these motors spin with voltage, I decided that I would swap the boards completely, right? So I swapped this board out into your drive assembly, and uh, from the one I showed you, obviously, that was working put it into yours and sure enough it comes to life so okay we diagnosed that the uh, assembly itself is not broken but it's just a board issue so I went and I diagnosed and looked around for any issues on the back side and the front side to see what's wrong with it most likely on the front side like you say and it turned out to be a few bit of damages that would cause this to boot up so here we are there we go so now it's spinning and we're reading the disk. So, I'll show you what was required to get this to work. Let's pull this out, take this off. There we go. And we'll zoom in on the situation. So, right here. So, uh, I began to inspect basically, I, I was going around cleaning it up, seeing if there was any damages. And sure enough, down here, there was a score right here that basically, I don't know if you can make it out, but you should be able to. There's a, there, that score cut across a trace right here. So that I measured across, and this trace wasn't making correct contacts between here and here, so no signal was being applied to what this is called, I guess, the cover trace. And so I decided, okay, I'll patch that with a wire, patch it with a wire, and then I also looked around and noticed that capacitor 303 is missing. I don't have capacitor 303 on hand, so that's the reason you may have noticed it took a slight bit longer for that drive to boot up because um, this capacitor is missing. In addition to that, um, down here, most importantly, resistor 502 was missing. So 502 is a 58 ohm resistor, um, and I don't, I can't, I, I don't have these surface mount components on hand. So I just took a through hole 100 ohm wrapped two together, and those in parallel will make a 50. And sure enough. Uh, the, as you saw, the drive comes to life. So those were the pieces of damages that were significant. There was a trace cut there, patch that. I'm still missing the capacitor, so you saw that the drive was spinning a little bit faster and a little bit slower than it needed to be because that capacitor is missing. And um, uh, these resistors will get the actual power there into the drive header. So I'm still going to send you, just to save time, I'm going to send you the one that um, I showed worked. And, but I'm going to completely shift the price around because it doesn't seem fair because I got one that works now. So I'm going to just shift it off, cut it, cut the price in half, and move it into labor because there wasn't any really parts cost. So it'll, it'll just be 45, in, 45 total, so that's including the labor, plus the shipping. So it'll be around 55 or so, 55, maybe 60. And that's Canadian as well, so <laughs> Canadian dollars worth nothing anyway, so... Um, if that's all right, let me know what you think. Um, I'll just send you this one back, and I'll keep this one and, and repair it for myself and put it on the shelf once I get all of the proper components and everything repaired. But to save time, I will send you this one and just consider it. Just pretend it was the one you sent me in. If that sounds all right, um, just let me know. And uh, I'll, I'll, again, I'll, I'll also send in the email the actual price that I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. I'm sorry for this inconvenience.